Hey, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Check out Pig and a Pickle. Two locations. They're in Emeryville and Corte Madera from open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. or until they run out. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in Northern California. Get the brisket. Get the brisket chili. Say hi to Damon. Say hi to Mary. And tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. All right, the 49ers have placed their first player on the injured reserve for uh, the 2023 season, and it's Terrence Mitchell. Niners put Terrence Mitchell on the IR, obviously with an injury. His season is over, and to take his spot on the training camp roster, they've signed cornerback Anthony Averett to a one-year deal. Now let's talk a little bit. Mitchell was interesting because he had played, you know, as a Sacramento guy who played at Oregon, but unfortunately he has an injury, and so now he's on the IR for the year. And in comes Anthony Averett. Now Averett's interesting, great athlete. 5'11", 185 pounds, originally drafted by the Ravens in the fourth round, 118th overall in the 2018 draft. And through his five-year NFL career, um, he played with the Baltimore Ravens in four of those five years, and then the Raiders last year. He's appeared in 57 total games, 27 starts. He's registered 95 tackles, 23 passes defensed, and three interceptions. He's also appeared in three postseason games. In fact, he's started a postseason game and he's tallied one tackle in the playoffs. He appeared in seven games, six of them were starts, and finished with 12 tackles and one pass defense uh, with the Raiders last year. He's a 28-year-old native of Woodbury, New Jersey. He went to the University of Alabama, and he played in 35 games for uh, the Crimson Tide, 98 tackles, 78 passes defense. He had the one pick in college, two forced fumbles, and two sacks. Um you know, a lot of people had high expectations for Averett coming out in the draft. He was compared by some to Tredavious White. He's got a great 40 time, 4 3 6 speed. Um, excellent reactive athleticism. He's twitchy. He's good in man coverage. He's got loose hips, good feet, and the guy can flat out run. Um, and, you know, it's, he's got great quickness as well, good route recognition. Um, you know, championship high school long jumper and 100-meter runner. In fact, he's got the, I think, second or third longest long jump in the history of New Jersey, 25 feet, 2 inches. Um, and he's capable of carrying long speed down the field. Um, he, you know, he, he's quick to stick and drive on throws that are in front of him. He's pretty agile, pretty athletic. Um, he can recover. And he's got good footwork to mirror receivers and press man coverage. Um, had a sports hernia in 2016, played through it. He actually can help you on special teams as well. He can cover kicks. He played the jammer spot on the punt return team. You know, he doesn't have great length. He's a little high cut. He's 5'11", um, and, and he's definitely got some strength issues. Definitely could use some more weight and some more play strength. And, you know, if you look at um, – you look at his career, you know, the ball production is not great when you look at when you look at that athletic ability and his man cover ability and the quickness that he has, you'd like to see more ball production than he's had. But um only one college interception, um, limited number of pass breakups at Alabama. But, you know, interesting player for sure. Um the guy can flat out run. Now, um, you know, when you see four three six, I mean that's a that's a great time. Um, and he played with the Ravens and, and then one year with the Raiders, as I said, New Jersey native, his nickname is smooth and he's thought to be a good man to man cover corner. He says he models his game after Patrick Peterson. I wore 28 at Alabama. If you see the kid in an interview, he's a very soft spoken kid, uh, grew up in, uh, idolizing Deion Sanders and he comes from a football family. He, he's the nephew of Bryant McKinney, uh, the longtime great left tackle. But if you know he's got experience in the slot, I think you can play him in the slot or outside. Um, as I said, he's got that four three six that he ran at the combine in Indy when he was coming out of Bama, um, and he's a slot corner. He's a slot corner, um, and you know, if, is he a camp body? You know, there's some weaknesses in his game. He lacks play strength. He lacks ball production, and he's had some injuries. You mentioned the sports hernia, twenty twenty. Uh, he missed some time with a shoulder injury. 2021, missed some time with a fractured rib. Uh, last year with the Raiders, uh, he had a broken thumb. So he's been dinged up a little bit. 
but you know, a corner with four, three, six speed. And, you know, obviously coached by one of the great defensive backfield coaches of all time in Nick Saban, uh, you know, that those are good traits. So let's see what he looks like. Um, you know, the 49ers have good depth on the corner. I mean, if you look at the Niners on the corner, they have tremendous depth, um, you know, better depth than they've had in the past. Um, and, and cornerback depth is, you know, the, the, you know, the old, the old coach used to say, what's this, you know, what's the secret to pass coverage? The secret to pass coverage is pass coverage. In other words, there is no secret to pass coverage. You got to have players. And if you don't have players, it's game over. Well, the Niners have three really good starters, right? They got Isaiah corner at the nickel spot. You got Mooney Ward at right corner, had a chance to talk to Mooney today. Uh, Demo Lenore is going to play that left corner spot, fifth round pick in 2021. He's coming into his own. They do have Darrell Luter Jr., who they just took out of South Alabama. Uh, Luter is yet to suit up for the Niners, though, in training camp. He did suit up in minicamp, and he looked good. Uh, but he has a bone bruise on his knee, and he's currently on the PUP list, the physically unable to perform list. Then the Niners also have Samuel Womack, who looks terrific. Uh, fifth year, fifth round draft choice in 2022, entering his second year. Womack's wearing zero in camp. Um, he looks great, though. He's all over the field against the run, against the pass. He looks terrific. Miles Hartsfield came over from Carolina, so he's in the mix as well. Uh, you have Ambry Thomas, who was a third round pick not that long ago, 2021. Uh, Ambry was a third round pick. Um, Quantrez Knight can play the corner. The former UCLA Bruin was an undrafted college free agent last year Knights already had some good moments in camp and then you get to Sean Jamison who you know was an undrafted college free agent out of the University of Texas this year and Jamison has looked phenomenal in uh, in training camp and I, th I would say Jamison's going to make the team in fact the other day in the uh, after practice at the podium Brandon Ayuk was asked about you know which players kind of stand out to him and he mentioned to Sean Jamison. Now he didn't say his name. He's like, ah, 22, 22 looks pretty good. And that's to Sean Jamison. So Jamison is a dynamic return man as well. Um, and we've yet to even see him return. Niners have a couple other guys as well. that can play the corner, AJ Parker, Trey Swilling. But if you look at that depth, that's pretty good depth. Lenore, Oliver, Mooney Ward, Darrell Luter, Womack, Hartsfield, Ambry Thomas, Deshaun Jameson, and now Anthony Everett, Averett. You've got nine corners right there. Most teams are not going to take more than five or six. So the Niners have good good cornerback depth for sure, and it's going to be a major challenge for Averett to make the team. But as I said, 4-3-6 speed, uh, really good coaching at Bama, and uh, you know a supreme athlete. Uh, we'll see what he looks like. We'll see what he looks like. He's going to get you know plenty of time in the preseason to show what kind of player he is. So the newest 49er, Anthony Averett, and, of course, sadly, the Niners are putting Terrence Mitchell on season-ending IR. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of The Krug Show, and thanks to all of you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.